Hello, YouTube. Today, I'm going to be going over a list of tips and tricks that I have curated that have helped me greatly in the Ghosts of Tabor. These are tips that I've personally used and found incredibly useful that I'd like to share with all you so we can also increase your chances of a successful raid. My next tip is going to help you secure much more loot and cash when you do end up extracting from raid than you typically would not doing this. And that is the art of stuffing a bag. Now, I'm gonna go over both bags, the small one and the big one, because there's a few things that I changed slightly about it. Once you start practicing this, you'll find it incredibly useful to not only fill bags much more quickly, but much more efficiently. So let's say you're out rummaging around for loot, you find some things you wanna pick up, and you've got nothing in the bag yet. Well, the first thing I always recommend before doing anything else and putting things haphazardly in the bag is to create a floor on the bag. So that's finding the lowest point that you can put something in the bag and as deep as you can go into the bag. For instance, that, which is a bit absurd, right? But find that spot, get your next piece of loot, line it up next to it, continue to do so. Continue to do so until you have pretty much the entire floor covered of the bag. And the reason this is important is because once you have that, then you can slam items straight down and know that they're going as far down as they should be rather than, you know, having the bag just kind of slip and ghost items through, which makes it really difficult to stack things. So now that I have a floor, I can just kind of grab things and quickly shove them down. And we can just build upon this base floor, right? So by doing that, you can stack bags quite a bit, just from bottom to top. And you can leave your important things that you like to use often uh, towards the top of the bag. I always put my meds at the very top so they're easy to access and grab, especially when I'm bottom to top filling the bag and the bag's starting to get a bit ridiculous. Now, the other thing that I wanna point out is a lot of the larger items, like this toilet paper roll, you're able to actually stick pretty far outside of the bag. You see how much it's sticking out there? And some items will stick out even farther, like, you can kind of see this toilet, or this uh, this bar here, and you can use that to your advantage to really make sure you're using your space efficiently. Now, now that you're bottom to top filling the bag, another thing that goes really unused is actually how far out of the back of the backpack you can actually put things. So, for instance, things that are really thin, uh, you can stick them on the outside of the bag. Uh, so they're not taking up precious space while you still continuing to fill the bag quite a bit. The book is pretty much completely outside of the backpack and it sticks just fine there. Another item this works really well on are canned food items. So food for whatever reason really lets you put things outside of the bag. So you saw the toilet paper roll example. If we take a look at this can, um, it's very much outside of the bag. And you can even do so out the back completely, like having food stick out of the back. So make sure you put things as deep as they go, and you'll be able to fill your bag up quite a bit more. So just like you'd line the bottom of the bag, as you work your way up, make sure you line both sides as well. You wanna line up this backside so you know you've got things pushed out as far back as they can go. So you can quickly grab an item, shove it in, have it get locked in that back place and be secure in the bag. Same with these left and right sides. So cat food is one of my favorite things to take out of raid because it's a can of food. And if you've noticed, 
The cat food is not even peeking through the side of the bag. You can line up a ton of food on this back end and other thin items, and they will stay just fine, allowing you to fill your bag up a lot more. Now, my next tip also has to do with bag stuffing, but it's pistols, pistols, pistols. Any phoenix you kill that drops a pistol, any pistol you see in a drawer, take it and stuff it in the bag. They are worth a lot of money and are worth taking, and I'll show you a good method for stacking pistols. So as you find your first pistol, especially on this small bag, what you're gonna wanna do is push it as far back as it goes, and then pull it in slightly, and as far to the left and upwards that it can go. But once you get it, and you have it tucked away in that corner very well, and this will be important in a little bit that I show you, you're gonna keep just stacking pistols right on top of the other, okay? And you'll notice how many pistols you can stuff in a bag. Now, once we hit the limit on how deep we can go, which look at how many pistols, pistols are in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And because we're bottom filling the bag, we always have this top space open for pistol stacking. Then, even with this smaller bag, you can come in here and start a second row of pistols. So you get that one as far back and to the right. I like to flip the barrels so they don't interfere with my meds and I can still grab my meds easily. And then you just keep stuffing them until you can't anymore. And you can take out an incredible amount of pistols doing this, even in a small bag. Now, once you've hit your outer limit, you can get a little fancy and start stacking pistols in here as well in this pocket. And you can see how many pistols you can stuff and still have tons of room down below to fill up with loose and miscellaneous loot. In this backpack total, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen pistols just in the upper part of the bag alone. Those will sell for a lot of money. Do this. Let's say you're one of those people who can afford to run around and got your hands on a bigger backpack. Same exact principles apply. You fill the bottom row. Notice how much farther out you can stuff this bag, okay? Look at, look at how far out past the lip that you can stuff this bag in particular. Make sure you're using all of that space. Fill it from bottom up after lining your walls. And once you get to pistol stacking, the only difference is that you have room to fit three rows of pistols rather than just two. And you can do that just like this. And you can see how three rows of pistols fit just fine in a big bag, so you can carry even more pistols out. So, practice this. Make sure you have a room dedicated just for pistols in your bag, and you will be making a lot more money out of your raids. My next tip is more of a piece of advice. All too often do I kill other players and grab their backpack off the ground, open it, just to find something like this. Stop taking mags and putting them in your backpack if they're not immediately for use for your gun. Mags are not worth much at all. They take up a ton of bag space and you're better off 
filling it with miscellaneous loot that is much smaller and worth way more money. Mags are not worth taking and bringing out of raid unless they are drum mags. Drum mags are the only exception for me. They sell pretty decently, even though they're a little bit large. The first tip I have to go over involves squads. If you're playing with friends, which most people do, to my knowledge, in Ghosts of Tabor, and one of your friends happens to die, and you're unsure of where they were getting shot from, instead of running around and looking for wherever the killer was, potentially putting you in line of sight without you knowing and inevitably dying because of it, uh, you should back out and get some high ground, find a little spot that has cover, and gives you a direct line of sight of your friend's body. More than likely, that player who got the kill is going to swoop in and check the loot. You can sit here, it takes patience, and you can camp the body and secure some revenge on a fallen friend. Now, my second tip has a bit to do with the first. If you killed a player, uh, don't rush in and check the loot right away. You need to secure and check the entire perimeter to make sure that they don't have a partner that's screaming at them over Discord that they just died and there's a player nearby. Running in without securing the area is a good way to get killed if that person was not by themselves. So be safe, check your surroundings, and always check for another enemy squad mate. Tip number three is something you've seen me do a lot if you've been around the YouTube channel for some time. And that is re-peaking engagements from different angles. Let's say you're coming in, you start taking shots at an enemy, and they start returning fire, and you haven't secured the kill yet. Well, when you're backing out and doing your mags and reloading, the thing I see people do the most is re-peak from the same exact angle to try and get more shots off after they've broken away. This is not a good thing to do, and I'll explain why. One, the enemy knows where you are, right? And as you've backed out of line of sight, behind cover, reloading or healing or doing whatever you may be, that enemy is going to be trained, more than likely, exactly where they saw you last. Their sights at the ready, just waiting to pull the trigger when you re-peek. And as you go to repeat that, uh, you're very likely to get shot and die because they are already aimed on you and you have to reacquire them as you peek that same angle. So instead, you should be working your way around to a different angle to peek from and check the last known location of the enemy because more than likely, they're going to be doing the same things, which is just hunkering down wherever they got into combat uh, and, and not repositioning. So by going and peeking a new angle, you now are the person that gets to line up your shots before they can even begin to see you or shoot at you because they're still looking, more than likely, at your old position. You've seen me do this time and time again and it has secured so many kills. Repeak from new angles. The next tip I have for you is always put in a fresh mag. Now here's what I mean by this. There's lots of phoenixes running around and you're going to be firing shots at them. And that mag that you've since fired a few times uh, is going to get shorter and shorter in ammo as you go through. And now that you've gone through and killed a few phoenixes, uh, eventually, at some point, you're going to run into a player, okay? and if that mag is not full when you run into a player fight or every round counts, you're going to engage in that player, start firing shots, and you're going to run out. And those little extra seconds that it's going to take you to pop in a fresh mag during a firefight is all it takes to die. So once you think you've gone through a decent amount of ammo, whether it's just a third of the mag or half, swap it out. Have an empty chest rig, at least one pouch, that you can always put an empty mag in and quickly grab a second from your next slot. That way, when you do run into those situations where you run into a player, you know you always have a fresh mag in. If you want to get really fancy with things, 
When you see a phoenix, usually they're not shooting at you right away. You have a little bit of time to prepare. You can always swap out that full mag, if a full one is in there, with one that you've emptied a little bit, that you've put away in one of your, your pouches. And you can continue firing what's left in that and swap back to a full mag as you're running around and exploring. My next tip also has to do with keeping track of your ammo. Uh, a new update has gone out where if you take a mag and you kind of just give it one shake, it's going to vibrate. And it's gonna vibrate anywhere between zero and three times. Three times is gonna be full and subsequent vibrations are just that much less full with zero being empty. So if you need to, in a pinch, when you've forgotten where you've put in mags that may be empty and may be full, you can go ahead and grab one, double check it real quick, so you know what's going on with your mags. My next tip allows us to get into raid a lot faster and spend less time in between raids in your hideout, getting geared up and ready to go again. And that tip is custom loadouts. So in the shop, let's say you have a gun you really like to build that has quite a bit of attachments. Well, take the gun in the shop, pop it on your holster, head on over to the kiosk, grab whatever attachments you'd like, And then proceed to scan the entire custom gun you've built with all the attachments on it. This can even include mags. Literally anything you put on the gun, once you scan it and check the checkout, you'll see custom in front of the item that you're buying, telling you that it is actually the custom setup that you've designed. All you have to do is hit the star, and that piece of custom equipment will be purchasable inside your hideout from your kiosk in the trade room. And in the same way, it works for armor as well. So get an armor rig you like, set it up however you typically do with your armor modules, scan said equipment, and in the checkout screen, we'll see that custom chest rig set there, which we can hit the star and favorite, and also buy pre-built and put together, ready to go. Saving lots of time in between raids. And now that we're back at our kiosk in our base, we can see the custom chest rig and the custom OP SKS available for purchase. My next tip will keep you safe in a pinch and will give you access to very quick healing if you need it in the middle of a gunfight. So not many people know, but if you take a knife module and attach it to your chest rig, you can actually throw healing items. Oh, never mind. they patched it. Uh, cut that part out. <laughs> My next tip is another combat tip. Let's say you're out running around in the open and you see a player very far away that is not looking at you nor notices you. Instead of standing out in the open where I see them and starting to engage, find cover first and make sure that when you do engage, you have room and opportunities around you to disengage, break line of sight, throw heals, reload mags, whatever you need to do in case things go south during the firefight. Combine that with our other tip earlier where you're going to re-peek from other angles if you do need to use the cover and you will be stomping players. I've seen a lot of players struggle with this. So my next tip is how to quickly swap armor chest rigs when you find an upgrade in raid. Now let's say we see this in a box. We pick it up, we want it. We wanna hold the trigger away from our body, reach towards our chest, pull the grip while that trigger is held, swap the armor, hold the trigger from far away on your other hand, reach towards the armor, but don't get anywhere close to it. Start grabbing way out here. Did you see how far away I was able to grab it? Grab those modules that you need to swap over and you'll be good to go. Now, if you run into a situation where you're trying to put that last one on and it doesn't seem to be fitting, just drop the old armor, grab it, hold it out, 
and try and slam it a few times on it. And eventually it will stick. And that's it. Swap chest rigs really quickly, especially if you're doing it out in the open and you're just a player ready to be picked off. That's it for today's tips. I have lots more that I'd like to cover and we'll do those in time. If you have any tips that you feel would be incredibly useful, leave them in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching. If you feel the video deserves it, give it a like, consider subscribing. It means a lot for my small channel. Also, I do a lot of live streaming on twitch.tv. The link will be in the description below. That's all for today. Expect more Ghost of Tabor content. And until then, I'll see you in the field.